Welcome to episode number 26 of Turning $100 into $1 million, the series where I risk a whopping $100 of my own money in an attempt for your entertainment to turn it into $1 million. Today is July 4th, happy holidays. The market is closed on this past Friday as well as the weekend, of course. So we're just taking a look at what happened on Thursday's market close. I did promise we're going to take a look at RF, the free stock, which I received a few episodes ago. And so we're going to be looking at RF's chart in this episode as well as an update on the stock that is very controversial as well as another stock that has definitely been making ground in the headlines in recent days. But first we're going to look at the profit loss statuses. So we have RF being at now a 2.39% loss or 52 cents down. DGOY is just a little bit over 20% loss or 18 and change. Levi is still up 2.75% up or 72 cents in the green. Viacom still up over 53%, 53 and a half. And now it's at $8.13 gain. OXLC is still in the red at 16.87% and $6.72 loss. We'll start with Viacom's chart here. Five days in the green, one month is still in the red. Just consolidating a bit, trading sideways right now. Not much price action in these last few days. It's pretty much been stagnant in the same spot. Doesn't want to make too much movement. Levi for the five day chart is in the green. One month though is still in the red. And it has recovered from 1225 when it hit that low there. It quickly bounced back the day after, in fact, or the next trading day. And now it's still at the 13 level. It doesn't want to go back down to 12, showing some signs of life. But at the same time, pretty much a stagnant. DGOY had a fantastic day. It vastly recovered from when it was looking pretty scary and bleak. It started to hit the $2 level and... I hope it didn't crash to $1, but it quickly recovered. It didn't want to go to below like 250. It stayed above that mark, and now it's in the green. And on Thursday's trading day, it was up over 7.5%. So great movement there. Still going to be holding on to it. Not going to be shooting myself in the foot or selling anytime soon. OXLC actually closed at the exact same price that it closed at the day before but then it had some movement after hours. But for the five days in the green, one month still in the red. And just kind of trading sideways right now. I do believe this consolidation here is a sign of a bottom. And I don't think it's going to be crashing through this level. It's maintaining above four bucks. Doesn't want to go back down below three, which is a good sign. I'll be holding on to that. And our F, the free stock that I did receive a couple episodes ago. And by the way, if you do want some free stock, you can get two free stocks, one valued up to $1,400 when you make an account with Webull. You can use my link down below in the description, create an account, and you'll get a free stock just for joining Webull. It ended up closing just barely in the red at a $0.03 cent loss from its previous close. However, it opened up right from the start of the market, up about $0.60, cents, more than that. So I don't know what happened or what caused it to precipitously fall so fast like that. Perhaps just some people that bought at 10 and change or maybe a little bit better price than that, and quickly sold when they saw that it opened up over 11 bucks and just wanted to take their profits. So that could be why there was a incoming amount of short sellers that caused this to crash so quickly. So that's probably why, but I don't know for sure. If you do take a look at the six months chart for Regions Financial Corporation, you will see that it did make a nice recovery after the low with the virus. You'll obviously see when the virus started to hit the US and it did make a nice recovery bounced back very nice now it's up about 50 percent from its low so good recovery there i'll be holding on to this for a long time i don't think i would sell it anytime soon just because i do think that there's a lot of potential with rf because it could definitely go up above you know where it was right before the virus great growth it has a nice dividend of about six percent 5.85 so i'm gonna be holding on to this i do think there's a lot of room here and it could be a growth stock and then if you take it even further, looking at the MAC chart, you'll obviously see where it did suffer from the 2008 crash greatly. Almost lost its entire value, almost 100% down. So I think there's more room to go, and if you look after the 2008 crash, it only has gone up in an uptrend from there, if you look at it from that bird's eye view. So I'm going to be holding on to this, I'm not going to be selling it. Then I just had to throw in a quick glance at Genius, I will give it credit. It did go up on the previous trading day at 124, or up almost 54%, so I will give it credit for that, up 55% if you include the after hours, even more than that. So I will give it credit, you know, it did have a good day, perhaps some positive news, or, or maybe short sellers covered their profits when they got in around here, 
and they just wanted to take profit so that increased the amount of buyers that could be the reason but overall that was just a mini spike and i would be pretty certain and confidently saying that in the next few trading days this thing will go back down and we could see it hit below two dollars one dollar even i don't think there's any hope for this company or stock you can correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me in the comments down below what you think, you genius stalwart supporters. Let me know what you think down below. But I think that this is going to zero. Then I want to look at this stock right here, Workhorse Group, or ticker symbol WKHS. Some people made sevenfold of their money. Some people 10 x their money. This had an insane run over these last... This is just a matter of weeks that this stock went up a thousand over a thousand percent. So if you look at the six months chart here, you'll see for a very long time, this thing was always a penny stock. It always traded at just a buck and change, two and change, three and change, but never higher than that. All of a sudden, starting, I would say, you know, around uh, June 9th, that's when you saw it go above $4 and it had no end in sight. Went up 460% there from that mark. But let's say you got in around here. We're talking, you know, 1,200% more than that. It's a manufacturing company, and we're going to take a look at why Workhorse Group happened to have surged in these last few weeks. So let's find out why. Why Workhorse Group stock is up today. What happened? Shares of Workhorse Group, ticker symbol WKHS, continued their surge on Thursday. The company's stock has benefited from intense investor interest in electronic vehicles and growing awareness of the potential of its battery electric delivery vans. As of 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this was written on the July 2nd. Workhorse Group shares were up about 4.7% from Wednesday's closing price. There was no major news driving Workhorse's price gain on Thursday. The lift appears to be driven by investor excitement around the potential of electric commercial vehicles generally and the potential of Workhorse's new C-Series delivery vans. UPS with the United Parcel Service, they have partnered with Workhorse on the design and they've already delivered over a thousand of the trucks to UPS and other package delivery companies including FedEx and DHL are believed to be kicking the C-Series tires. And there's more opportunity ahead. The USPS will soon take proposals for electric mail delivery vehicles and Workhorse hopes to win that business, which could be substantial. If I ever did get that deal with the USPS, that would be really tremendous for this stock. Its run started with good earnings in the second quarter and now its vehicle partnerships are making the stock surge even more so. I would say a lot of the window of opportunity is closed for now, being that I don't think it's going to be returning to the penny stock level. I do think there's room to go if it does get that deal with the USPS. I don't know how much higher it could go. If we look at the max chart here, this is the highest in history that it's ever been, so there's no telling how high this stock could really go. There's no history or patterns, or bottoms, or tops to base it on. It's really speculation. After hours, it did dip a little bit. I don't think that's something to be concerned about. There's no telling about how high this stock could really go. Whenever you see a penny stock run up so quickly like that, you want to take it with a grain of salt. You don't want to just throw all your money in it so fast. We'll look at the net account value. It does stand at 180.38, so definitely more than 100, but still room to go with a few stocks in my portfolio that are still in the red. I would predict and surmise that RF would be the first to go back into the green, followed by probably OXLC. I think that stock could run up. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure that you give the video a big thumbs up, smash that like button, and if you'd like to see more videos and episodes from my channel, be sure that you do click that big red button, the subscribe button, and if you'd like to be notified every single time I make a new video, because that's your first line to see it before anyone else, be sure that you do click that little notification bell as well, so you're notified every single time I make a new video. See you in the next one.